Hello everyone, welcome to the Genesis Home Podcast, where we talk to experts in real estate, finance, business, community, and beyond, covering topics that are important to us. Let's listen in. Hi everyone, this is Rita of the Genesis Home Podcast, and I am here with Katina Carney. Hi. So we've been trying to do this for a minute. Yeah. So, and I'm like super excited. So if you hear me like giggling a lot, that's because I'm excited. I'm okay. really hyped. Okay. <laughs> um, <laughs> so tell us about yourself. Like, I know you're, you're you, it's not just you're an agent. You just have so many other facets to you and to yeah. your business. So why don't you explain that? Okay. So I am a real estate um, agent. I'm licensed in Tennessee and Georgia. Um, I work with people with low um, credit scores and help them become homeowners. That's how I started um, in real estate. Um, I also um, have a team here, and it's real estate high performance. I have a school also that I teach agents from I take them from class to cash in this real estate high performance academy. Um, one of the niches that I have, and I started it about, I said about three and a half years ago, was container homes. So that's that's a little bit about me, and that's what we're going to talk about. Yeah, and this is actually a very important topic because yeah. there's a lot of people that want to buy homes or buy or have land or things like that, and Mm-hmm. They always assume the traditional, right? And we're seeing a lot of people. We're seeing a lot more up and coming, of what I call alternative real estate, mm-hmm. in the sense of you have like three D homes. They have now you have uh, container homes and uh, the boxed, box X ones, the ones that are, you right. know, pre made and everything. Right. So let's talk about container homes. Okay. Explain that. Container homes are. Containers. So you know the shipping containers they use to ship merchandise across seas to other countries, um, back here to the United States, different states. Um, those are the containers that we use to make them out of contain out of homes. Um, we usually use the forty foot long containers, and the forty foot long containers they are forty foot by eight foot wide, nine foot tall. Um, one of the things we do use are one trippers and two trippers. These containers are the ones you could, are allowed to use for residential. One tripper meaning it's been out one time. Two trippers meaning it's been out. It's been out two times meaning it's been out ship used for shipping items, and that's for safety reasons. Um, any questions you may have so far? <laughs> so far, how are they built? So they're they're made out of steel. So um, the containers, what my I have a, a contractors. Well, I have several contractors in different states, and what they do is they take them and they build them out to make them look like a home. So they add anything you want inside. So they're all customized. So Think of a commercial, think, I mean, think of a um, new construction home. So you take the container and you put in what you want. That means cabinets, um, stove, microwave, um, recessed lights, um, hardwood floors. Um, you may, you know, if you want to do a combo shower tub or just a shower by itself. Um, of course, toilets, sinks, mirrors. Whatever you want to do to build them out. Are they built on site or are they where are they built? So we build them in a control site inside um, to keep from, you know, the weather getting to them while we're building them. And then we ship them to the location and then we put them on um, a, either a slab or whatever foundation you may want. And then you have your general contract on site who will do all the connecting to the um, 
plumbing or electrical. And then um, we also have them available if you need to do any welding, putting the containers together. Now, they go from the warehouse to the the place where, obviously, it's going to be its new forever home. (laughs) But does, when I mentioned before, we mentioned, like, land. Okay. What's the, people say that there's raw land and then there's prepared land. What is the difference between the two? Well, your raw land, you wouldn't have your utilities on them. That's all that means, and they're not. You know, they don't like they don't have a septic or um, city water hooked up or electrical hooked up. That's all the difference Um, with land. I tell everybody the first thing is make sure that the zoning is right for the container home because it's a new product. A lot of people don't want it in their neighborhoods. It's probably not going to be allowed. Um, We can do things to make them look like the stick builds to pass for those situations. Of course, that would cost you more. So, the first thing is zoning to make sure that it's allowed in a neighborhood and what's allowed and how many can you build. Um, if it's commercial, you know, check with use it's easier to do commercial than residential. Um, but really. Yeah. Hmm. And and if you walk in your neighborhood, if you go downtown to your neighborhood anywhere, there are probably already some there. You just didn't notice it until you notice it. <laughs> it's like it's like when you buy a new car and you think you got the only one and you drive down the street and you see five or six of them. <laughs> <laughs> That's how it is with the container homes. You don't know until you actually put your mind on to look for them. Um, yes. And that is so true because I saw some on Pinterest mm-hmm. and I know you have a group as well on Workplace and yeah. you show so many photos and yeah. one that really stood out was one that was designed for Starbucks. Right. And I never really, and you're right, I never really saw it until I saw it. Like yeah. until like, it's ident- like, like you look at like the details of things. Yes. How now you mentioned the hardwood floorings and you mentioned all of that. Yeah. How, how does it go from how do you get those like design concepts? Do they make them or are they so, often purchased? So this is the thing. You can get an architect of your of your own to draw it up, or we have an architect on on our um uh, team that draws it. Um it depends on what you need you know, and how far you need it. So we do the cab files where we'll have them to send to, you know, the bank or whoever may need them to look at the the layouts. So um, our first, the first thing is we will have to just get an idea from you and then we go from there. Um, you, one of the processes is figuring out what you want first. Because you, as you know, plans are expenses, expensive. So we try to get it in detail what you want first before we send it to the architect. Okay. And so it just depends on what your finances is, if you're going through a bank or if you're paying, you know, your own money. So when going through a bank, what should they look for? Because, I mean, I don't think you can get a regular mortgage or something like this. Can you? You can. Um, I'm doing one now. It's a a construction loan. And they're buying the land and the the build out. Um, It's kind of, it's easier if you buy the land first, then wrap it all in one. Only because the process of getting the container the way you want it, finding the right people to do your foundation and things like that takes a little longer. Um, I have one now. I had to push the contract back because I'm waiting on um, the the general contractor that I had. He got busy, so I had to find another one to come and do the foundation. And um, <clears throat> you have to get the people that know about container homes, too. Because the foundation is not the same as the foundation on a house. 
because all the plumbing runs under the container, mm-hmm. you have to do the foundation different because that's your access to your utilities if something was to happen. It's not like a house you can drill through the wall. It's all up under the container. <clears throat> So the land, the foundation has to be inspected before anything can happen, essentially, what you're saying. Well, basically, I'm saying we we have a, we we do the plans for the foundation separate from the plans from the container. Okay. And then we give those plans to the foundation plans to your general contract, who's going to lay your foundation, because we do not do the foundation. We just do the container. Okay. Now, I saw on eBay, and I think it was eBay, and I want to say Amazon, mm-hmm. and also Pinterest, because that's like an agent's addiction right. <laughs> social media thing. We just love using Pinterest. Mm-hmm. Um, they had these, uh, what they call like, pre-planned designs. Yeah. What's the, you, sto- what's the story with that? Because I don't understand. Like, that part I never understood. Like You just buy existing plans? You can buy existing plans, but they get expensive. Like our plans run you probably about $600, $700. And those plans, and, and they, you know, I've never bought any of them. But you need plans that are going to be stamped by an architect in your state. So those plans are not going to be oh. the 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 um, plans you need to move forward. They're just going to give you an idea. Oh, right. that so makes just, sense. Right. They're just drawings. So I couldn't take, like I'm here in Tennessee, I couldn't take the plans in Tennessee and draw something in New York. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. It would have to be stamped by a licensed architect in your state. So oh. That's why. And that's another thing. Mm-hmm. I, 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 see, I don't see a lot of them. Are they slowly coming to the city? Because I've seen a lot of container homes in like the suburbs and, and the country. Once again, you're right. I'm, I'm, in, I'm from New York. Right. In New York, Tennessee. <laughs> so the thing about it is the more the need you're going to see them. Um, one of the reasons I got into this is because of the need of affordable homes. And a lot of times, you know, you have to look at other ways of putting people in homes. You can't just stay in the box of stick built. Um, Tennessee is known for a lot of t- tornadoes. So I was also looking for safety. These have stand up to 170 miles an hour winds. Um, The hurricane we just had was 90 miles an hour. So the thing about it is we got to look for safety and also cheaper, but still nice. And and I'm not saying they're going to be cheaper um, for a product. I'm saying, you know, the basic containers is less expensive than buying a home. So the one I'm doing now She's doing eight containers and um, it's more like a four or five bedroom house. And plus it's on an acre of land and she's paying less than $300,000. Nice. It's, you know, and she got to design it the way she wanted. So it's just about, you know, what you want in it course when you start adding a lot of windows and the designs you see on Pinterest it gets more expensive but you know it's something that's going to be sturdy it's something that's going to last especially since the weather we get you know not just here but all over the world the weather has been so different you know it's hotter mm-hmm. in the west it's it's you know it's um, raining more here it's you know even overseas, you know, they get getting tornadoes and hurricanes. I mean, who would have thought New York would get a, a hurricane, you know? Yeah, so it's twice. Just, right. 
it's just things that are <laughs> happening now that you know our homes are not standing up against these stick bills are not standing up against so i mean if we had a flood in a container you know the the container is sealed tight the water wouldn't have got in so and then you wouldn't see it floating down the street like some of the you know um trailer homes now that is interesting now you mentioned the trailer before we get to the trailer home topic because I I did live in the south so we're gonna have that topic in a second <laughs> let's call them modular homes to make people feel better yeah <laughs> yeah that's what they call them up here too yeah <laughs> but the interesting things you mentioned you mentioned about weather mm-hmm. and I'm from a state where mm-hmm. it gets incredibly 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 Mm -hmm. incredibly cold right uncomfortably cold right to the point you don't like winter cold right ice is rude cold (laughs) right so uh, the container is insulated so it's insulated with foam throughout the walls of the container so the build out is it's the same as a house. You build out, you take your, you know, your four by fours, build out, and then you fill it with foam. And then you have your walls. So it's the same build as a house. The difference is the insulation is all throughout the container. So you don't have, and then we have, you know, a heat and air condition, just like you can add the same kind, like your home, or we have the little small ones that, Throughout the house, and they're heating, heating air. So they, they don't. You don't get cold. You don't. You know, you get cold if you turn off the heat. The same as if if you was in your house, same HVAC unit. Um, you can get it where you can, um, go through the ceiling and put the same installation and everything from the like you do in your home, the the ducts, but it would take away from your ceiling space. So it just depends on what you do to it. Well, at the risk of sounding like a northerner, mm-hmm. is there <laughs> is there a change in our like? Have you seen from your experience a change in like the electric bill? Um. So, or the, is it roughly the same as buying a a traditional home, or a, you know what, what people call a traditional home? I think it would be cheaper. Because most of it is open space. It just depends on what you add to it. If you're adding stairs inside and you got a second level upstairs and things like that. So it just it just depends on what system you're using and then also, you know, what are you building out. Okay. Yeah. Um we have some here in Nashville, some apartments. And um I've talked to people and they've said they love them but they're only one bedroom and two bedrooms. So it just depends on, you know, that person. Now, I really want to come back to the topic of the modular home or trailer home or whatever. Yeah. I've, okay. One of the common topics that I know you get and I get sometimes is buying, you know, space enough to create a development Right. Okay. We get that topic a lot here in New York, and right. they want to, you know, do a uh, co-op condo type setup in upstate. And right. I know in Nashville. I mean, I know in Tennessee, which I'm mm-hmm. reading, mm-hmm. that people are starting to buy land so they can, you know, create, you know, little communities for themselves. Right. right. How would a in the case of options? Obviously, mm-hmm. the topic's about container homes. and Well, the thing about it is, my advice would be the container homes only because you can stack them. Okay. So, you can't stack a modular home. So, you can stack containers. Containers stack like Legos. I mean, you can see them floating down the river. They're all stacked up. They're not going anywhere. So, if you're going to build a community and you want to save space, you know, think of always thinking in um, rectangles, you know, stacking them. 
that would be cheaper than trying to build a commercial building based off built, you know, or wood, buy in buy, or yeah, the things modular you homes and right. then still have empty space and everything exactly. around it. Right. Because, you know, living in the South, when I was living in Alabama, I saw like a few land development, I saw a few places that had, you know, some of them had container homes and they they had pools and everything. It was like really just, you couldn't tell the difference. Right. And then you would go further down into like more like peanut country. Mm-hmm. <laughs> and you will see the modular homes and there's so much potential. Right. So the question really is, when it comes to container homes, will that maximize or handle that kind of potential? Exactly. Right. Yeah, I think I think it will. I think it'll bring more value, um, longevity. Um, like I said, weather wise, um, I think that the space that you have in the container home is is more valuable. Um, the thing about container home, you use all the space. And then also um, resale value, you know. If you you ever thought about selling it, you know, you'll make more money than on a um, trailer home. So I think the value, you know, I always think like an agent, if I buy it today, how much would it be worth in five years? You know. And that's a, that leads to another topic, though. What is the role of the agent when it comes to container homes? So, the most thing you have to do is uh, go through the process with your client um, from start to be, to finish. I tell each agent that, you know, a container home is not real property until it hits the ground. So, you want to do something like a... a a fee up front. Um, I do a consulting fee in case they decide to back out because you're going to be doing the groundwork. You're going to be making sure, you know, the land is okay for them to build. You may have to go down to codes to make sure the area. You may have to go to planning. You may have to pull the map to see where they can build. Like you have to go through the whole process with them. You know, you have to find the general contractors. You have to make sure you hire the survey form. You have to get it, you know, the land stake. Everything you have to do, you have to do the setting up meetings with the um, builder, which is my builder, him. You have to go through the whole process. So my advice would be first get a consultant fee. Because people say they're interested in doing it. And I've been doing this for three years. And you get, I get so many people, I'm ready, I want to do this, and they back down. And you don't want to waste your time. So, I mean, if it's, if it's something that is well known for in your area, then you, 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 know, you may can trust it. But don't waste your time when, you know, because time is something nobody can get back. So that that would be my advice. What do you think is the most complicated part of that process, though? From the, and I don't mean complicated as in, you know, there's so many parts to it, complicated as in how to navigate. So what part do you think is the tricky part? Is it the design? Is it the land itself? Is it the construction? What's I think the... funding, money. Because people say what they want and they won't have the money. I've had large groups of people you know, they had this great idea. They wanted to meet every week, you know, and then turned out they didn't have any money. So I said funding first. Um, know your area. Know where, what banks that will fund it if they need funding. Um, proof of funding if they're going to do cash. Know your budget. I think that was the hardest hurdle for me once I found the a person to fund it and then I had to find a person who done insurance for it like you have to map out the whole steps and like I said I have the whole steps of things that you would need um, consulting with me first 
would be the first step, but funding is the, the biggest one. So you think part of the, okay. Huh. And you know what? I always thought it was going to be the design that was going to be the tricky part. No, because like I said, the people who work, who built containers, they've been doing it for years. So it's most likely they can have your design in their database. You just have to tell them what you want and they'll tell you what they can do. So okay. designing is not the hard part. Okay. My, and I think the, the big question, you mentioned the, you know, codes and buildings and everything. Obviously a permit is going to be the question. Well, the, the thing about it is, it's not so much a permit because while it's getting built, we're getting checked off and inspected anyway. So everything is being tagged. Electric, the plumbing, it's all being tagged. The person that's in your state, when they come out and look at it, they'll see our tags and pass the inspections. So that's not a problem. The problem is making sure the land is zoned, meaning it's not it's not necessary saying residential, but is it zoned for, you know, most time if it's zoned for um, trailer homes, mobile homes, usually you can put a container there. Um, you can talk to the councilman in your area if there's a councilman um, and ask them. So you can get it rezoned. Which is another process. Yes, like it I, is. Yes. And, and like I said, we can make it look like a stick big house by adding wood to it, adding a roof to it, things like that if needed. So it just depends on, like I said, the area you in and what's allowed. And if we modify it and we take we take those same plans down to code, would they say, Okay, we can move forward. Right. And also when people think of zones, they just think residential, commercial. There's also zones within residential. So you have like exactly. one family home, two family home. Like what's one. the multi- you have historical. You, you have so many zones inside of zones. Exactly. You, right. And so that's where the plans come in. And that's why I tell people the first thing, draw what you want. Get it to us for for, for the architect to draw it. Then present those plans to your planning committee or whoever, you know, who um, mandates that zoning or planning and say, hey, this is what I want to build on this piece of land. Will you allow it? Because if you just tell them, they won't understand. So. Now, what if, <clears throat> can't think. Oh, I see what you meant with that. Because I was thinking like the opposite. Mm-hmm. You know, if you want to find the zone, you can get, you have a better idea on how you do the layout. Well, once you find the land, you can have a better idea of what you want. Fair enough. Right. Now, <clears throat> my next question is actually about the transfer transportation part of this, because okay. obviously it's not made on site. It's right. assembled on, I mean, it's like you know attached on site right. but it's not made on site it's made off site so when There's, you factor in the budget or when you factor in the cost do you also factor in the cost of transportation into yes, their into their invoice yes we do so transportation is included in in the bill so um we use the the track you know the the trucks that pull the uh, containers they so each truck only can hold one container. So if you need six containers, that's, that's six, six trucks. Trip. That's six trips or six trucks. Um, the cost will factor on, you know, of course, the miles. Um, usually it'll run about a dollar or two a mile. A dollar a mile if my truck can come down and pick up a haul, like business wise. And bring it back and then come back and get your stuff. You know, it just depends on 
So it usually run me a dollar to two dollars a mile. But that's all factored in. Um, I try to find locations that are closer to you or as a builder. Right now I have um I have Vegas, Florida, Texas, Arkansas, and Georgia right now. So um you may want to get in try to find someone in your area, but those are the areas I have now. And like I said, even with using my guy in Arkansas, I found that his transportation is cheaper than some of the people starting off in they, with their containers. So. I love Vegas. I have a soft spot <laughs> for that city. Oh, I it used is... to. It's just too hot. <laughs> <laughs> it's just dry heat, though. It's not like, okay. you know, sometimes okay. it can get muggy up here I'll... or... You know, when it's wet, but it's it's dry heat in in Vegas. And I really enjoy that place. (laughs) Well, I I, want to say 118 is not dry. It's hot. (laughs) I don't know what difference between dry and wet and soft and whatever, (laughs) but 118 is hot. (laughs) No, it made me laugh that in the shade is like 110. You're going, ha, release. No it's so shade. No shade. <laughs> they don't have trees. They have palm trees. Palm trees don't give a shade. <laughs> yeah. it, was, it was 95 at night. So. Valid. Okay. That's okay. true. That's yeah. true. <laughs> but you can go to like, you can visit New York, Paris, France, and. <laughs> Yeah, in New York too, <laughs> and New Jersey, all on the same strip. Yeah, <laughs> it's just, you can't. Yeah, um, yeah, all on the same strip. Yeah. yeah, the funny thing is, I heard that um, I think uh, Circus Circus is getting rebranded. It's a it's an actual hotel called Circus Circus. Yeah, and I heard that they're they're changing things around because of the pandemic, and you know they want to make people safer. Oh yeah, and I said, "There's nothing safe about clowns. Have no. we not seen the movies?" No, no. <laughs> but yeah, they would. I saw the new construction, and when I went in July, and um, it was um, it, I saw I went on the streets of New York and on one side, and I saw Paris, and yeah, <laughs> and then New York was in, indoors. Praise Jesus, and it had all the little. It looked like Sesame Street. <laughs> In New York. <laughs> That's what it looked like. <laughs> well, they got us right. We were yeah. a little Sesame Streety. Yeah. And I saw they had and they had all the little streets, you know, Broadway and all that. I was like, wow, this is nice. They had um uh, Time Timeshare, Time City. Is that what it is? Times Square? Times Square, yeah. Yeah. They had all the little shops and little restaurants. The yellow restaurants, they had little small versions of it. So it was nice. So, quick question. You mm-hmm. mentioned um, affordable homes. Yeah. You know, our, our, our respective states' definition of affordable are completely different. Oh, yeah. But, but we need to have that conversation because having, knowing that there's a way for, you know, people to, you know, become homeowners or, mm-hmm you know, investors in some way to help people who are either low income or, you know, are not. Well, that's the thing. Affordable home is not low income. Exactly. So because I have people that make good money, but still can't afford a home. So I I believe affordable income more looks like an individual taking an individual and seeing what they can afford. So I would say, you know, it's like when I, when I um, used to live in the housing project and my neighbor was paying $40 a month rent because she wasn't working. Well, my rent, I was paying almost $600 a month because I was working. So a lot of people look at people that live in housing projects, oh, they're lazy, they don't work, they don't pay no bills. Well, you know, 
I was. And I was working. And I was paying bills. And, you know, before I left, I think I was paying over $1,000 a month in the housing project. Well, first of all, that is a common misconception for everyone. I mean, I live, I, you know, we have, you know, multiple housing projects here in the city. And I have friends who are, you know, they, they're, they're comfortable, you know, they, they're teachers, they're doctors, they're students and everything. Mm -hmm. And people assume that if you live in, you know, affordable housing or something like that, that that means you just can't do anything. So that's not true. What it is is that one, they're probably in transition of something and this is an affordable option. Two, you don't know their circumstances that it could be the fact that, and I live in New York. New York's not cheap. New York's expensive. So for them, they probably see that this is a cheaper option to live in an expensive city. Exactly. And And if we treat... Right. And if we start getting into the habit of talking to people with the same level of respect, Mm -hmm. you can be surprised how much that changes. And the reason why I wanted to bring the topic of affordable homes or affordable housing or things like that is because the one thing I do love about container homes personally is that accessibility. Exactly. And that education at the same time. Exactly. And you really shined a light on that on that 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 need for both that mm-hmm. you can own a home and do what you need to do if you had the right education the right support and the right information exactly and, and, I, and that's the thing i wanted people to understand that you know you got to think out the box you can't always stay in that box and be comfortable in that box so a lot of people, when I do talk about container home, I don't want to live in a container. Well, you know, where do you want to live? You know, that's affordable, that, that you can turn into your own oasis, you know, where you have a choice. You know, I can look in my neighborhood and I can find the same house built at least 10 times, you know. Do you want to just be like everybody else? You can be different. Also, and the issue yeah. is sorry. Also, the issue is that when people think container, they actually think just the container. They don't see that those things can be transformed. Exactly. And they don't see the long term value of that. Yes. So yeah. that's why I, when you mentioned the affordability part, mm-hmm. that's what drew me to container homes. Exactly. I mean, the container home, um, my business partner is doing one now that's um, not too far from Nashville. And a lot of my friends and family and and people I work with are being moved out of the city because they can't afford it. Well, here it is. She's building her home and it's out of containers, but she's still in her neighborhood. You know, same here. It's mm-hmm. really, like I said, New York's expensive. It is not cheap. I mean, exactly. a bacon, egg, and cheese now is like one fifty. No, yeah. that's not true. Mm-hmm. It's three, something like three dollars at this point. So, yeah. <laughs> so, and I'm seeing a lot of people as well trying to move out of the city. And I don't I think mean, they want to. I think they have no choice. Because it's because the the right. one the standard of living has changed, and two, they yeah. may not need the same things anymore. Right. I and mean, I've been in my house that. since 2018, and I think I got about almost ninety thousand dollars worth of equity. Work and moved, it, and I moved out of the out of the city. I'm an hour away from the city, so you can imagine. You know, I moved down here because it was cheaper. Now it's not cheaper here, <laughs> so. You can imagine how hard it is to find, you know, property. You know, I got clients that qualify for two hundred to two fifty. You know, it's hard to find, especially when I got cash buyers who are buying at two fifty to two to three hundred thousand. You know, mm. like, uh, also everyone's moving. I mean, not just between, mm-hmm. and you're seeing mm-hmm. a lot of people move to the south. So the need oh, yes. for you're welcome.
Mm-hmm. <laughs> <laughs> oh yes, that that's another thing we're competing against people co- migrating here. So I mean, it's like my first time home buyers are competing against um, people who are selling their homes and buying something cash. We got investors. We got people from other cities, other states. Like my first time home buyers are like, you know. I just want to give up. I don't want to keep looking. You know? And I always tell them don't give up because Mm -hmm. you never know what's around the corner. And also, Mm -hmm. I'm seeing a lot of people interested in the alternative. I keep calling it alternative real estate and that's not really entirely what it is, but that's the best way to explain it because it's not, it's outside of the norm. And And see, I know when I presented it to my... uh, to the planning here in Clarksville. They were like, no. And then they, I had another guy who presented it to him and he was, you know, he knew the mayor and he knew everybody. And he was like, maybe in a couple of years. So you get, you get, you get pushed back, you get pushed back, but you got to keep pushing, you know? And that was my whole thing. I'm going to keep pushing. Mm-hmm. So. Well, they're seeing success. And like I said, I'm seeing plenty of them in upstate. Yeah. And I, you know, I'm and partly because it's like like you said, people living in the city or right. living in like very expensive towns and they're going mm-hmm. I can't well, I can't afford doing Georgia what I want to do. Lot. In Georgia, if I go on my Georgia GM G A M L S, um, I'm seeing them three to four hundred thousand dollars. Beautiful. Exactly. So I mean, I agree if you just keep getting the word out, letting them know that it really is important. And yes. also, you want new. This is once again, the city is going to kick in in two seconds, mm-hmm. but you want fresh money. Exactly. And if you keep recycling the same mentality that mm-hmm. this man who has millions of dollars, which is great, but at one point he was didn't have that. Exactly. So you want to keep new investors. You want to encourage more people to buy because part of both our states is part of their revenue stream is taxes. Exactly. So if you're not making, if they're not getting their revenue, which is the taxes and small business are not getting their money, things like that. Part of the reason is because you're not encouraging new people to buy property, become investors and things like that. Mm -hmm. So when you mention that importance of the process Right, and you mentioned how like, being the consultant, mm-hmm. you know, being the support system, that really changes a lot of this. Exactly. So, what is the one thing you would recommend someone to do if they're interested or they they want this to be a one? If they're interested in buying. Also, if they want to start a career and make this their real estate specialty. Um, The one thing I do is um, get with me so I can help you with the research. Um, Because because I've been doing it so long, I would hate for you to have to start all over. Um, I do do um, um, a consultant and then I your first project, I can help you by walking you through the process. Um, I do charge a fee, like my time is value too. If you want this to be your your career, if you want to do it in your state and be known for the person, the go to person to do it. So, I would just say, um, and then if you have hurdles, don't be afraid to jump them. Because you're going to have pushback. You're going to have hurdles because you got to realize nobody has done this. And so when, when you see that, just be ready to pivot and, you know, make things happen. If they're interested in buying, because now I'm listening to you and I am really debating really (laughs) going down that track. Well, the thing about it, if you're interested in buying, get your idea out first. Draw it, figure it, pull it on Pinterest, whatever. Your idea is out first. Then set up, like I said, set up a consultation with me and we'll get it to the builder. 
too. Yeah. Okay. Really quick, and I'm just curious. Uh, class to cash. What's that? So class to cash, I take new new or seasoned agents and turn them into agents that are producing income. So that's my. So what I do is they go through my real estate course that I have. <clears throat> And it's real estate high performance. And if you go to real R E, it's R E real estate R E H P A. You got that online. You'll go to my online course. And so I do coaching, and I also have a course. And basically, we take people as soon as they come out of school, we get them branded, did everything done for them. They go through my real estate course. Um, I guarantee they make their first deal in 30 days. And we put them through the whole process. Nice. Yeah. So it's basically, you know, putting them on track for success, finding out what their goals are up front, making sure they do everything they need to do to continue to be a successful real estate agent, making sure, you know, they're paying their taxes, Make sure that everything that no one done for me when I first started. <laughs> no, I hear that. Yeah. Lots of book, lots of reading, lots of research. Yeah. I bet you did the, uh, when, um, when I first got started, I remember people saying, well, just do cold calls. You'll be fine. It's like, no, I don't think that's how that works. Well, see, we provide leads for our team. So we don't do cold calls. We do warm calls. So you still have calls. You just do warm calls. That's it. Yeah. We don't actually New York State can't cold call yet. So, yeah, well, we don't Which, do cold calls. Like I said, because of our marketing, we don't have to do cold calls. I Everybody never did them. To, they know <laughs> they gave us their number. They gave her the, the, the information. They raised their hand and said, "Hey, I want to be, I want to buy a home, or I want to sell a home, or both." Which is really what it should be. It should be a, a warm lead. It should never. I'm not. A, I never did cold. I did it like twice, and I was really not very good at it right. because I feel. I feel like it's like imposing on someone, and you can't force someone to work with you. It has you to be. Have some, to, you know. Right. It should be natural. If you're building the business correctly, right. they will come to you. You don't have to go to them. Right. And everybody's not your client. Exactly. They may be a customer, but they're not your client. Your client. Yeah. Which it's I learned coach. the hard way. I think we all learned that the hard way. Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. But yeah. I just, because I saw it as well, and I was just curious about it, and I thought this was a great way to plug it in. Yeah. And, yeah. But, and so tell us about Nashville really quick, because I know uh, eventually. Nashville you, is really growing. Um, great things going on, excitement. Um, I I see that um, it's going to even get bigger. I was just down there yesterday, and I couldn't even recognize the place. So, I mean, it's getting to the point where when I do go, I feel like I'm a tourist. <laughs> <laughs> so, it's really growing. Um, Clarksville is growing also. We're getting a lot of things that are building here in Clarksville. Um, and uh, I'm just excited. I am going into, the, you know, I'm, I recently started doing the commercial side of real estate. Yay! And, um, I got a $3 million restaurant I'm getting ready to sell this year. Congratulations. So, thank you. So um, I'm, I'm getting over to that side. That's the side I want to be in. As I build my team, my team is taking over the uh, real estate part, the residential part. Mm-hmm. Um, and I want to I wanna do full time commercial that's my goal and build the containers for its commercial also I'm not going to lie every time you mention Nashville I'm just like itching to hop on a plane come on <laughs> but I'm going to visit you first you know where I'm going to be first I know <laughs> <That's busy. laughs> exactly you act like this, this is new <laughs> this is the thing like I'm going to take you to Princess Chicken and you won't like Zaxby's anymore. Never. Okay. <laughs> I have Chick Fil A up here. It's like not no. the. It's not the same. I mean, nothing against Chick Fil A. Respect. Yes. Yes. I mean, service but, is great. Yeah, but it's not Zaxby's. 
I know. But Princess Chicken is better, I promise you. <laughs> Challenge accepted. Yes, Princess. Also, I really don't really milkshake. Um, Hattie Bees is nice. Oh, I remember Hattie Bees. Yeah, they're Hattie all Bees black on. Hattie Bees black on. Um, and Slim and Husky. It's all downtown Nashville. And they're amazing. I'm also craving a milkshake. Okay. And I keep telling my friends, you know you can get milkshakes up here. It's not the same. Not the, same. the milkshakes here are healthy. Uh-huh. <laughs> I need real. Hey, I told you, I do a banana pudding um, protein shake. That's amazing. See? <laughs> but see, I have a feeling that even that, even though it's healthy, it will be decadent. It up is. here, I love my city in its own little funky way, but it's healthy. <laughs> Even the French fries taste healthy. Oh wow! Okay. I, I need a place where in Spain. When I went to Spain, mm-hmm. I went to Burger King, the onion rings felt healthy. See, <laughs> the grease wasn't. I guess the grease wasn't dark enough. <laughs> <laughs> and I'm so used to like, you know, chicken tasting like chicken. Yes. You know, French fries tasting like French fries. They go, "This is French fries. It's in." A special oil with the avocado and one that's I don't I don't I don't need all that. I just want a French fry. No. That makes me question why I'm eating it. I'm not questioning this. <laughs> okay. I need to go I need to go to Nashville. I mean I used to go, like I said, when I was living in the South and I used to go for like the barbecue competitions. Yeah. And that was like the, the perfect time to go because you get to eat everything and you get to have fun. But since being back there's so many things and besides that, because obviously we're going to be craving that for a while. Oh, yeah. Fried you pickles. Come. You just got to come. You just got to go. Something go simple. And just come. Something simple as fried pickles. I posted on Facebook and someone shipped me fried pickles. Now, do mm. they have fried pickles up here in New oh, York? Yeah. Yes, they do. Oh, yeah. Fried but tomatoes, does. fried pickles. Yeah. We but, fry anything. You know, the right, but, fry anything. Bananas. Here's the th- but Tomatoes. I never liked pickles as a kid. I go down there, I want them in a bucket. What? I didn't like pickles as a child. Because I don't I'm not a big vinegar person and it's brined in vinegar. So I went down down south and I think I went to Saw's Barbecue in Alabama and they had fried pickles. I'm going, I'm not gonna like these. And they go, just try it. So it's fine, because it comes with the order. So I had one and I was like, I need a bucket. Says we don't offer it in buckets. This is so good. So, like, even like, like you something about Southern cooking is just there's like you guys take the, it's this the it just it's so down home. Oh yeah, it, it's his. It's like food for your soul. Yes, <laughs> and that's why I'm jealous. <laughs> okay, I mean, I have like like I said, this there's good restaurants in New York and there's good fast food places in New York. We have the Shake Shack and all those other places. Mm. But it's not. It doesn't have that I'm kicking it with my cousins and we're all sitting there talking and I'm eating. Like chicken and waffles. Yeah. And it tastes like real chicken and waffles. And the funny thing is I don't like chicken and waffles when I when I was when I lived up here. <laughs> Down there. Oh my goodness. When I say the things I did not like as a child, yeah. I moved down south and now I like them. All right. So I'm learning is how it's prepared. Mm-hmm. And sometimes there's certain things you just need. You need fat. <laughs> That's it. So uh, thank you so much for no coming problem. on. This no was problem. awesome. No problem. Let me give you my contact information. Yes. Tell everyone where um, we can find you. So if you need to contact me, um, my email address is Katina, C-A-T-I-N-A, at J i b stone.com or you can contact me my phone number is 615-977-3178 and um, you can send me a text or call me um my real estate website um is real estate high performance.com or real r e h p a dot online is the most effective way and just contact me, and if you're interested in doing a container home, um, set up an appointment with me. We can get started, and um, just make sure you're serious about doing it. If we have more questions, just also set up a phone call with me. 
Thank you so much for coming on, Katina. No problem. It was my pleasure. And I want to thank you also, Miss Rita. I I follow you and I watch you grow your business also. So um, kudos to you for sticking in. Um, I love Genesis. I read your articles. I listen to your your iPod, your uh, podcasts, and I'm excited about what you're doing also. So congratulations to, to you of sticking into your business and making things happen in New York and all over the world. <laughs> Thank you. All right. all right. I'll talk to everyone later. Thank Bye. You. Bye. <laughs> <laughs>